Hi everyone, I'm Danielle McFadden, President of the Chamber, here to talk a little bit about ways that we can be using social media and technology during this time of physical distancing. All right, so let's get started. Uh, so I like to say the term physical distancing instead of social distancing because the term social distancing was contributing to people feeling very lonely and isolated and it's not that at all. We can still be very social even though we are all sheltering in place at home. And as an extrovert, I am very happy to have things like FaceTime, Zoom, and social media so that I can continue to interact with friends, family, the community, chamber members. Um, a couple bonuses to that, you can get together with friends in your pajamas. You only have to get halfway dressed for Zoom meetings. Um, so you could have a nice shirt on the top and be wearing your pajama pants at the bottom. No one will never know unless you stand up. So be careful about that. Uh, and I like to say we can't embrace each other, but we can embrace technology. So let's use the technologies out there to help us during this time. So here's a screenshot of me and my friends. We did a virtual happy hour, some of us with coffee, some with wine. I had kombucha. And what we did is I had reached out to them in advance and I said, why don't we take what we would have spent on a cocktail in a restaurant and donate it to a local restaurant? So I donated what I would have spent on a glass of wine and I donated it to Cobblestones and Moonstones because they have an employee fund and all that information is on the Chamber website. Some of my friends had ordered takeout that night, so they tipped a little bit extra. Um, so we all wanted to do our part to help stimulate the economy and help local businesses. So that's definitely something that you can do when you're on a Zoom with family or friends. I like to say Zoom is the new black. So a month ago, people didn't even know what Zoom was, and now it's a household word. My six-year-old talks about Zooming with her classmates. Who would have thought that back in the middle of March that Zoom would become such an important tool for all of us, both personally and professionally. I've heard of people doing things like virtual happy hours. I've actually participated in them. As I mentioned, you can have a book club through Zoom. Uh, different businesses and organizations are holding classes. I've heard of people doing yoga classes and dance classes via Zoom, music classes. If there's something that you have a talent in, why not offer a class, whether it be through Facebook Live or Zoom to your friends and family. And the great thing about Zoom is you can record everything. It's really a simple tool to use. Game nights, I just heard of house party, which is similar to Zoom, but you can play different games. Group exercise classes, my brother and his wife have friends from all across the country and they got together the other day and they did a Richard Simmons exercise video while dressed in 80s clothes. So you can get as wild and crazy as you want with these things. But what a fun way to interact with your friends, even though you're far apart. Play dates. So my daughter's had a couple of play dates via Zoom and connected with her friends that way. And even tutoring or reading. I've heard of grandparents reading to their grandchildren via some of these tools. My brother is tutoring my daughter a few times a week on math via Zoom. So he's all the, we're in, Massachusetts, he's in DC, and she's still able to see her uncle on a regular basis. Um, so some really good things have come out of this. I know it's a really hard time for us right now, um, but there are some things that we are thoroughly embracing, and I know that these are some of the technologies that we'll be incorporating when we are able to open up and go back to business. So Zoom for a cause. Everybody wants to have some control right now and do something positive in our community. And there's so many different ways that you can do it. And here are some creative ways that I've thought about. Um, so when you're scheduling a Zoom with family or friends or maybe coworkers, think about what you can do for the greater good of the community. Um, so I've already talked about our virtual happy hour that I did with my friends, but we also did one with the Athenian Corner. We had 50 people on Zoom from all across the country and people donated the cost of their cocktail to the Athenian Corners Venmo account. And they raised over $600 that night through an hour long Zoom. And during that, two people went into the Athenian and grabbed takeout. So they were eating their Athenian Corner takeout during the Zoom. And at the end of this, when they're able to open up, they're going to have a big party, like a little cocktail hour for all the people that join them on Zoom. So pretty cool. And I shouldn't say when they open up, when they open up for seating, because they are open right now for takeout. 
a coffee meeting. So many of us are having meetings via Zoom and conference calls. So why not suggest if you're meeting somebody for coffee for them to go on, hop onto Brood Awakening's website and purchase a gift card and donate what the, co the cup of coffee would have cost them and give it back to a local business. And when you're Zooming with friends, you could pick a nonprofit. Uh, so I sit on several nonprofit boards and I put a challenge out to some board members. And I said, when you're Zooming with your friends or family, why don't you get together and say, if we all donated $10 and there's 10 of us, it's $100 to the organization or $20. Getting people to think about, you know, we're saving money in the sense that we're not spending it going out to eat or going for drinks, but how can we take the money that we do have and that we're able to donate and put it back into the economy for a good cause, whether it be to help support a local business or to help support a local nonprofit organization. Stay connected to your community through social media. Um, so here are a few examples. Um, so I created a Facebook post for the Merrimack Valley Food Bank. I sit on their board. So it wasn't even a Facebook fundraiser. It was just a post with the donate button. And within an hour, over $1,000 had been raised. Um, and to date, we're at almost uh, $2,500 through a Facebook post that happened on March 29th. Today is April 22nd, so almost a month later, and $200 in donations have come in in the last 24 hours. So think about how buried that post must be down in my timeline, but people are still seeing it and donating it, donating to the Merrimack Valley Food Bank. Um, I've, I like to kind of post fun things just to get people interacting, thinking positive, having some fun, getting to know each other. Um, so a couple examples are one, what's one thing you're thankful for? And oh, uh, we had 72 comments on that. What's your favorite quote? 94 comments. Um, so people just having fun and taking their mind off all that's going on right now and getting social with each other. We also did fun things like um, the unpopular opinion game where you list 10 things that people generally like that you don't like. And I think I lost a few Facebook friends by telling people that Fleetwood Mac is one of the things that I really just don't like. I'm so sorry if I insulted anybody. And there's a Facebook group called Quarantine Karaoke where people from all across the country come on and sing karaoke. Uh, so people are doing things that are fun to take their mind off of of what is going on in the world on quarantine karaoke. There was one woman who was dressed up like Rapunzel from Tangled singing Disney songs. And so there's just so many th ways that you can use your talents right now to cheer people up. The power of the inbox. There's no time like the present to be checking in on your family, your friends, your clients, all of your network. Um, so sending personal emails, email blasts through your business or organization, sending direct messages on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. I connected with somebody that I hadn't seen in a long time on LinkedIn, and now he's doing a seminar for us. Uh, text messages, just checking in. Me and my college friends who you saw in a couple of slides before, there's 12 of us that hang around from college still, and we're on a constant text message chain all day, you know, every day, just checking in on each other. We like to, at the end of the day, one of, one of my friends always says, okay, what are four things that you're grateful for? So we say what we're grateful for. We share recipes, we share wins, we share when we're sad. It's just really good to have that support group available right on my phone. Um, and then not forgetting about the power of the mailbox and supporting the U.S. Postal Service while cheering people up. So Dot Richards, who's a chamber member with Cards by Dot, you can actually go to cardsbydot.com. That's a tricky one, cardsbydot.com. And you can send an actual beautiful card in the mail by going online. You either create your own card by pulling a picture of somebody off Facebook or using one of their templates type in a nice message and they will actually print it and put it in an envelope, stamp it and mail it for you. So you don't even have to touch anything. And it's a great way to cheer somebody up and also to support the US Postal Service. They're working really hard right now. Uncertainty leads to creativity and innovation. Anything that's happening right now, I like to try to flip the switch, even if it doesn't feel like a positive and say, what is the opportunity in this? Why is this happening? What can we do to make a positive thing come out of it? How can we be creative? How can we continue to connect with our friends and family? How can the chamber continue to add value to the community and our members? Uh, on Facebook and social media, even on the news, I've seen things like drive-by celebrations and parades. 
So for people's anniversaries and birthdays, video montages to celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, organizations, people, so many virtual events. I mean, people are getting really creative offering, trivias, bingo. It's amazing what you thought you could only do in person that you can actually do via platforms like Facebook Live and Zoom. Um, teddy bear and Easter egg hunts, people putting pictures of eggs or teddy bears in their windows and walking around the neighborhood and seeing, going on a bear hunt, um, sidewalk chalk walks where people are dressing up their driveways and their sidewalks with beautiful drawings. Um, I mentioned this earlier, but you can offer a tutorial or DIY help. If you're really good at something, why not put your talents out to the world and share it with other people so that you can inspire them to be a little creative um, and crowdsourcing ideas to spearhead a project or a cause. Think about some an organization or a family that you want to help and how can you rally your friends, family, so social media followers for this cause and have some fun with it. Help your community. Have you seen a theme throughout this? I'm all about giving back to the community, as many of you are. Um, so as individuals and families, I've seen people post things like, I'm here for you if you need food or help with something, no questions asked, just send a message in my inbox. If you need food, I will drop it off at your front door. So letting people know that there are individuals within the community that want to help those in needs, and we all in need. We also know all the nonprofits that are also available to help. Uh, there is a Lifting Low Orleans Assistance and Mutual Aid Facebook group. I think last time I checked, there was over 1,100 people on it. And this is a great group to join if you want to offer help or if you need help. Um, nonprofits, you could create a fun fundraiser or a drive through social media. Um, you can ask an organization if they have a client or a family that you can adopt. I'm on the board for the Center for Hope and Healing, and they have between 70 and 80 families that could use assistance with perhaps accessing technology through tablets or rent assistance or groceries. And for between $100 and $250, you can actually adopt a family through the Center for Hope and Healing. You give the donation and they'll take care of the rest. Um, and they have a fundraiser going on their Facebook page right now if you want to check that out. Support local businesses. Buy local, make a point to buy local. And when you do buy local, post it on Facebook and let your friends and family know so that you can inspire others to do the same. Tag the business. Um, leave a review for a business on their Facebook, Yelp, Google pages. That makes a big difference. Share their content. If they post something on Facebook, share it on your own page. Help them expand their reach. You can purchase a gift card to use at a later date. Helps them with their cash flow. Um, open a tab for future services. Order takeout and delivery. I've seen a lot of this, people supporting local businesses. That's a great thing that you can do. And also tip in advance. I contacted my hairdresser when this all started to see if she had Venmo or PayPal so that I could send her the tip in advance for when she does my hair next, which as you can see, she's going to get a double tip and really earn her money on that one. So as a business or organization, take advantage of this time. So it's now April 22nd. So we're going on six weeks of this. So at first we were all kind of scrambling, okay, how do we get online? How do we get our workforce to work remotely? How do we still work as a team even though we're in different places? How is my business gonna survive? How am I gonna get funding? Well, now that the, some, some of these things have been sorted out, because I know there's still a ton of stress on people. Trust me, I get it. But take advantage of this, and like I said, take some uncert something that's uncertainty, and that could be perceived as a negative, and flip it around and see what, what the opportunity is in all of this. So as a business or organization, take advantage of all the online resources that are available to you. Webinars, online classes, virtual networking, complimentary advice. I know there are so many people out there for instance, business coaches, consultants that are offering complimentary advice, uh, a complimentary hour with somebody that you can actually just pick their brain for ideas, get some new inspiration, take advantage of these things. The Chamber has so many virtual events happening right now. We're also grabbing events that other people are doing, throwing it in our email blasts on our calendar. 
the more opportunities and information available to you, the better as far as I'm concerned. Update your collateral. Look at your website, your social media profiles, your print materials and see what needs to be updated, added, fixed, changed. And I am preaching to the choir right now because I definitely need to do that as well. I mentioned this earlier, but getting reviews. Now is the perfect time to ask your loyal followers, clients, customers, members to leave you a review on Facebook, Yelp, or Google. Start building that so that when you throw your doors open after this is all done, you have these great reviews because people really do look for that social clout and to see what other people are doing in terms of reviewing and what their thoughts are on a business before they decide to do business with a business or organization. Um, and you know, I'm gonna give a shameless plug right now. If you don't mind, give the chamber a review on Facebook or Google. We would absolutely appreciate that. Um, and now is a great time for a system overhaul. Streamline your systems, update your marketing plan, review job descriptions, personnel handbook. Take all those things that get pushed to the bottom of the pile and start tackling some of those or allocating some of those to your, if you're lucky enough to have some staff to do that for you. How can you make an impact for the greater good? How can we take this time and use it to better ourselves, our business, our organization, our families, our community? Here are two great examples. Um, the Greater Lowell Family YMCA, along with Kevin and Tara Morrissey, did this huge snack drive for Lowell General Hospital. And that is an example of just one haul that they did they raised thousands of dollars and purchased so many different snacks and needed items for Lowell General Hospital. The Artisans Exchange made a post. They were making masks for people and not charging. Here's a small business that could use as much support from the community as possible and they were spending their time making masks and handing them out to people who needed them. So hopefully this gave you some inspiration on how you can inspire the people around you to use technology, to be social, to give back, to better themselves, the community, their business, their organizations, their friends and family. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this. If you have any recommendations on different webinars, ideas that you'd like to hear more about, things that we can be doing for you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My information has been at the bottom of this whole video and I'm happy to chat with you and the chamber is truly here to help and we just want everybody to know that so thank you so much now i have to exit out of this and stop sharing my screen so that i can get out so still learning the zoom thing but i have to say i am 100 percent loving zoom and i hope that um, if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out hop on one of our virtual events and check out zoom and then embrace the technology because remember we can embrace each other but we can embrace technology i almost said we can embrace ourselves but technically we can embrace ourselves but we can embrace each other but we can embrace technology thank you very much for watching